Now that your store is ready, let's start customizing your settings. Select settings from the left tab on the home page. This module encapsulates the settings related to the running of your online store. Website related settings can be accessed from site settings. You make changes to payment gateways and shipping and taxes under general. To integrate with shipping carriers, click on shipping carriers, choose your preferred option and click setup. If you already have an account, you can add your details here. Else, our help document will guide you with the step-by-step -step integration. Once you're done, go back to the settings and select currencies from the general section. Select add currency and add the currencies you want to display on the home page of your published site. Enable currency converter so that your customers can choose the currency in which they want to view your products. Note that the checkout will take place only in your base currency. Brands. Go back to settings and select brands to view the list of brands that you added along with the product details. You can also add new brands by selecting the add brand option on the top right corner. To edit or delete a brand, hover over the specific brand to its right. Manage stock. Once you're done, go back to settings and select manage stock under general. If you've enabled the track inventory option for your product, your stock will be automatically updated as you make sales. To increase, decrease, or assign the quantity of a particular product, choose your action from the drop-down box, enter the amount in the quantity text box, and the updated stock will appear in the final quantity text box. To rearrange your products, click on the Sort By icon. Once you're done, click Save. Your current stock now will be updated. Coupons. To add a new coupon, go back to Settings and click Coupons under General. Click add coupon code and enter a name for the coupon. Enter a custom coupon code or click generate code to get an auto generated code. Select the discount type and enter a discount value. If you want to limit the number of times the coupon can be used in the store, choose limited from the drop down box and enter the number else choose unlimited. The same applies to coupon limit per customer. Select the start and end time for the coupon and click save. Your coupon will be listed here. Don't forget to enable the coupon button and click save. Hover over the coupon and click the edit icon to make any changes to it or delete it if need be. Store settings, org profile. Go back to settings and under store settings, click organization profile. Update your organization's name, industry and business location. To edit your primary email ID, click configure emails to add more contacts. You can also change the email address from which email notifications are sent. Different companies follow different fiscal years. Select the one that best suits your organization's accounting. You can change your weight and dimension unit and add your company ID along with your tax ID. Once you're done filling the details, click Save. Click on Website Locale on the left. Update or edit your time zone to suit your business and select the date format you follow. Set your default website language as English if you want and click Save. Preferences. To edit your order and invoice settings, customer support info, and your terms and conditions, click Preferences on the left. Update your order ID and invoice ID format. Under Checkout Settings, select All to enable both registered and guest users to check out. If you want only registered customers to check out, click Open Member Portal. Enable your site's member portal, the sign-up switch, to display the sign-up link on your site. You can disable it if you want invite-only users to sign in. Click on the email notification button to receive an email every time a new user signs up. Click the checkboxes next to the field you would like to add to your sign-up form and click Save. Go back to Preferences and under Checkout Settings, enable Include Terms and Conditions during checkout to display your terms and conditions in the checkout page. Click on Edit Page Content to make any changes to the page if necessary. Enable this button to restrict purchases when a product is out of stock. Over here, enter your support email ID and phone number and click Save. Click Smart Recommendations to recommend frequently viewed products to your customers. Enable the search bar to let customers find the products they are looking for, then click Save. Email Notifications Automated email notifications are time-saving ways to eliminate the need for customers to request their order status. Click on email notifications and enable those you feel are necessary. 
These email templates are editable and are sent only after the corresponding step has been performed in the order section. You can also enable email notifications to yourself when the product is low on stock, out of stock, when you receive an online payment, and every time an order is placed. Users. To invite other people to manage your store, go back to settings and click users. You can give select access to all modules except the site builder. Click add user and enter the email along with the role. Selecting admin will give the person as much control over the store as the owner. They can't publish or unpublish the store, nor can they edit other users' permissions. Whereas, if you select staff, you must select the fields you want to give them access to. Now click share. The users that you've added will be listed here. Product reviews. Under the product reviews module, you can moderate user reviews and edit your preferences. Click on preferences. Use the drop down list to edit the number of reviews you want to display on a product's page. Turn on email notifications if you want to be notified every time someone writes a new review. Enable the show capture checkbox to prevent automatic spam reviews. When review moderation is off, all reviews are approved by default and are displayed on the site. When you select automatic moderation, spam reviews are detected by our system and are automatically hidden. If you select manual moderation, your pending reviews will be listed here in the moderation section. Click the ellipsis icon next to the review and mark it as inappropriate or spam or delete it. You can also filter the reviews to be listed using this filter icon right here. Back on the preferences tab, under allowed users, verified buyers will already be enabled. There will be verified buyer tag on the reviews of those who actually purchased the product. Enabling register users will allow only signed in customers to write reviews. Then click apply once you're done. Zoho CRM. Go back to settings. Under configure, click Zoho CRM to access your products and sync your existing products from CRM. Your contacts from Zoho Inventory will also get synced here. To apply the settings you have saved, hit Publish. Collections. Go back to Settings and click Collections on the left tab to view the set of curated products you have created. Like mentioned in the earlier webinar, collections can be all sorts of product groupings like a sale you have going on or products of the same brand. You can also add more collections here directly by clicking on Add Collection button. Categories. Right above Collections, click on Categories. Think of them as aisles in a supermarket, except that they turn up as pages in your store and help your customers navigate it easily. All the categories that you've added will be listed here. Drag and drop categories to reorder them. Move them to the right to create subcategories. Hover over the category to delete it or edit it. Clicking on the Edit button will enable you to add more details to the specific category, such as image, description, and SEO content. Once done, click Save. Orders. Click on Orders found right above Categories. You'll be able to view your list of orders along with its order ID, custom name, order status, payment status, shipping status, and amount. You can export the orders by clicking on the Export Orders and export them in any of these listed formats. Choose your date range and enter your password for the exported file if needed. Then click Export. Click any order ID to visit the corresponding order details page. Your order, payment, and shipping status are shown on this page in addition to the other details. On the right, you can view the customer details, whether it's a possible spam transaction, the shipping and billing details of the customer. If you want to make any edits to the details, click on the Edit button under each section. To confirm your order, click on Confirm Order. You can also print your invoice, packing slip, and delivery note from here. Choose the mode of shipping, whether it's manually or via a shipping carrier. To ship using a carrier that you have integrated, select Ship via Carrier. More details can be found on our user guide. To ship manually, start by entering the carrier name, service name, tracking number, and dispatch date. Click on the Item Cancellation Return tab. If your customer has requested to cancel the order or an item from the website, it will be reflected here. If you received your offline payment by the customer, click Mark as Paid, choose Change Payment Status to Paid, and enter the payment details. 
If the customer has requested for a refund, choose Initiate Refund. Refunds can be initiated irrespective of shipping status. When you initiate a refund from the Payment tab, you can refund the full amount or a partial amount of the order. Use the Notes section at the bottom of the Order Details page to record any messages or details. Click Mark as delivered on the Shipping tab once the customer has received the order. Dashboard Once your website is up and running and you start making sales, your dashboard will give you your store stats and performance data. You can view your store's sales in this chart. Just hover over the tips of the graphs to see total sales amounts for a particular day. Over here, you can view your pending and confirmed orders, and these are the orders that have been delivered and those that haven't been. Down below, you can find the top abandoned products, which are the products that visitors added to their shipping cart but abandoned them there without making a purchase. You have products low on stock here. Your store's best-selling products can be found here, while your store's visits are recorded below. Hover over the tips of the graphs to view the number of visitor sessions on a particular day. Your store's top 5 frequently visited products and pages are shown over here. Reports. Here, you can track sales performance based on orders, products, product variants, and categories. This will help you identify trends, predict outcomes, and discover insights of your business. Sales by orders shows the number of orders that you have received yesterday, today, this week, and month. You can also change the report range to weekly, monthly, or yearly. Just hover over the tips of the graphs to see the total sales for a particular day. Below that, you could see the total revenue, including the refund, tax, and shipping charge as per the orders received on each date. Sales by product gives you the list of products sold from your website. You can also change the report range to weekly, monthly, or yearly. Similarly, sales by product variance and category gives you a list of products sold from your website as per variance and category. Click on Traffic to track performance as well as understand the top converting traffic channels through the number of website visits, through which sources and mediums, and product. Click on Customers to view your top and frequent visitors. Click on Payments to view the list of failed transactions. In case the customer has contacted you via your customer support phone or email and has paid through a different mode of payment, click Convert and select Convert to Paid Order. You can click on Unpaid Order and remove them from your store records or just select Send Their Cart Link via Mail to send a reminder. Abandoned Carts will give you a list of frequently abandoned products along with the customer details. So that brings us to the end of the webinar. We hope this session was useful. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you soon in another webinar.